Okay, hello and welcome. My name is Amy Ryer and I have Renee here with me. I'm the project coordinator of the Rural Health Initiative. The mission of RHI is to engage partners to share ideas and expertise and to support communities in improving health while stimulating a higher level of wellness across the state. Before we get started, I will share a couple of technical details with you. All of your lines have been sent to mute. At the end of the presentation, we have a question and answer session, and at this time, I will unmute all lines. If you wish to remain mute during the Q&A, you can mute your line um, using the WebEx control panel on the right, or you can do so on your phone. Um, there will also be a survey at the end, so please go ahead and fill that out. And then um, we will have a couple videos in this first presentation. And to get the audio on the videos, you'll have to make sure that your computer speakers are turned on, on as well. Um, OK, I think that's everything. So thank you for joining us today. I will let Renee introduce the speakers. Welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining us this afternoon. I want to give a great shout out and thank you to two of our colleagues, Marta and Christine, who are going to do our presentation for us today. Marta uh, has been a teacher in Fort Benton at the high school since 2002, and she wears many hats. She taught computer science with an emphasis on Microsoft programs, world history, US history, senior government, career studies, and a variety of health science classes since 2004. In fact, Marta was one of the first to introduce health science into the curriculum and has seen many students successfully go through her program. Christine Simonson has taught for a total of nine years across the Billings School District. Currently, uh, she was hired at the Billings Career Center four years ago to start the Project Lead the Way Biomedical Science Program. She teaches both principles of biomedical science and human body systems. And both of these ladies went to the National Consortium for Health Science Education National Curriculum Conference last October, and we've invited them to tell you all about what they learned at the curriculum conference. And I believe Marta is up first. All righty. Am I ready to go? I hope so. Um, welcome. And I wanted to show you the skyline of Louisville, Kentucky. This is where we were. We stayed right downtown. This is my uh, fourth, third or fourth National Consortium of Health Science Education. Um, I know that I'm in a small school, but I have had a lot of phenomenal kids come through. So I've been very, very lucky. I'm also extremely lucky that I have a school that promotes professional development as strongly as we do. And so I have been um, very, very blessed to go to all these conferences. And I'm happy to share everything with you. My um, video is more geared towards technology that is available and technology that we are going to start seeing as careers evolve in this, this new world um, that we are looking at in the medical field. So I'm just going to play my video. I'm going to stop it a couple times and take you into some other areas on the screen. And we'll go from there. Hopefully, everything will work. Here we go. Just to let you know that, again, this is the, the skyline of Louisville. I'm going to talk to you about MindTap, which is a health science online book. It is um, all online. It's not an e-book. It's for online courses. All the courses that you see up on the screen are available through MindTap. They, um, cr uh, they, they impress or they change it every year to make it more relevant. They have chunking for reading. You can see that they have drag and drops. You can see that, oh, sorry, got a delay here. Oh, we'll go back just a second. Had a little delay. OK, and as you can see, there is uh, simulations where the people will have a simulation and you must answer the question over in the action question area with the resources available. Also, we have a mind tap for health science where you have to go in and they ask you which tools you should use during your terminology. Also, they have courses here that you can see that you would have to change a chart. Um, MindTap also offers uh, recording pronunciations. As you can see, you record and pronounce the words. And once you're done, they tell you if you're correct or not. 
Uh, this is a skeletal system. You do image labeling. You can do your own standards available. Also, you can personalize it for individual instructors or for individual students by adding extra activities that are available online. New technology, this is how you gauge it. You look at their scores, the class average, how many times they've logged in, and it gives you a running account. MindTap is through Cengage Brain. It's very easy to sign up for and really pretty affordable. I'm going to pause my video right here for just a second, um, just to let you know that Professor Corinne Hoisington is from the Virginia area, and she did an immense amount of uh, projects. I've listened to her three times talk about digital health science and technology. She is actually the one that did this video to begin with, and I thought, you know, in rural Montana, uh, drones, AEDs, they're, they're going to come into being, and that's just one of those areas of technology in the field of medicine that I think is going to be quite interesting, not only for uh, our young people to look at drone flying, but also for um, just the health benefits that would receive if they were in, um, if they were in, you know, like I said, rural Montana. Uh, the AED is something that's brand new. It's a very new. And it's something that we're going to definitely see as we move on through technology. So just a little add-on to let kids know that this is what we're looking at. I'm going to continue on. I moved it a little bit forward because of the advertising. So hopefully you didn't mind that. Um, we're just going to move it a little bit forward. Quizzes. If you've never done quizzes before, quizzes is a free program that was introduced to me. I guess it's been around for a long time. And also, Kahoot is a free program that is available for you. Quizzes is exactly what it is. And so what I did is I just went ahead and put together a quick quiz for you. And to do that, I'm going to toggle out of my video and show you how quizzes works, OK? So I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to click on um, Hopefully you can see this. This is where quizzes is. You just simply type in quizzes, yep, it's spelled with two Zs, dot com backslash join. I give my students the six code number. What does it look like before then? It looks simply like this. I joined in. It's all free. You can see my name on the top right-hand side. 
If you want to search for quizzes, you can search for them in a public domain, or you can make your own quizzes, which is what I've done. So all my quizzes or quizzes created by me. You can see my collections over here on the left-hand side. You can see that I have about 27 quizzes that deal with my sports med class. I try to pick out grades that are 11th to the university or 10th to the university. Once in a while, I give a 7th and 8th grade quiz. But I give this to the kids, and how I do it is very simple. I will simply click on a quiz, and I will pull it up, and I can either give it as homework or I can do play live. You guys, I gave you a play live. And so what they do is I click on play live. I adjust the settings. I can either do jumble questions, jumble answers, show the answers, show quiz review. Show the leaderboard. If you want students to be competitive, the leaderboard is pretty cool. If you do not want to time them, you can turn it off. You can also adjust the time inside the quiz however time you want. They also have memes, which are kind of funny, and they also have some really good um, lethargic music that they play. And all I do is I click on Proceed, and when I click on Proceed, I give my students this six this six number um, code under joinquizzes.com. When they enter, their names fall down, and then they start the game. Okay, so they just simply enter and then start the game through the enter of the code. So it will look something like this. So what I did is I'll just hit proceed, and you have to enter your name so that the teacher knows who you are, so that they know that you are involved, and click on join the game, and my meme comes up, and then I click on start. The reason I get to click on start right away is this was a homework assignment. If you're in my classroom, I would receive all the memes then I click on start and all the students start at one time. So I click on start, they give you a rundown of what you're going to do, and then you simply answer the questions. When you answer the questions, you simply have to um, click on it and they will tell you zero points or sorry, wrong answer, and then they'll show you your rank. And then they'll give you another question and I'm just going to go through this really, really, really fast. So, um, zero again. I'm not doing very good. You guys are making me nervous. But you get the idea. So eventually, you can take this grade, and I'm actually going to show you that the grades come up. And I'm going to go back. So for example, I go into the word My Reports. I click on My Reports. And let's say I wanted to look at a completed quiz, and I'm just going to use my executive branch quiz that my students just took a couple days ago, okay? So when I click on view, I can see what my questions are. I can see how the students answered the questions. If they didn't answer a question very well, trust me, they are going to get that again. I can also see my players and see how they answered out of 12 questions how they answered. That is quiz is. It's pretty simple. It's free. You should, you should try it out. Kahoot, same way. It's free, except in Kahoot, you um, are competing against each other. And there is um, no, you can grade in there, but you can't give homework with it. It's just a little bit different, but they're both free. So please, you should enjoy them the best you can, because something free isn't going to happen very long. So we'll try to, you know, try to help you with as free as much as possible. Um, I always say if there's something free out there, try it until somebody gets really smart and then charges you for it. Okay, I'm going to continue on with my video.
I think sometimes we do take t technology too far, and at times I think it has, but we must embrace it or we will lose out. And I think if you lose out, you're losing out on your students and the advancement that we have. As we're talking about all the advancements of robotics taking over surgery and all the, the technology and computer imaging and all of the stuff that we're talking about, I think you have to embrace it. But like I said, don't embrace it all at once or embrace little bits every time, but you don't have to, you don't have to not use it. I think if you don't use it, you are going to lose out. This is a new program right here called Capture. It's on Office Lens. How many times have you taken a picture and the, the picture is laying down on a desk? If you use Office Lens to take the picture or the snapshot, it brings it forward. You can make it a PDF or you can make it a blank Word document. So anything that's sitting down at an awkward angle, when you use Office Lens, it pops it up. So the next time you're at a conference or the next time you have to take a picture, there it is. I think Corinne put this one in just because she knows that not all of us are always going to embrace technology to the point that we forget about everything else. And I think that's important. There's nothing wrong with a lot of technology, but sometimes you got to remember the old is still pretty dang good. And I think that's what we have to keep our happy medium. Technology is good, but also the old ways were good. You got to kind of kind of average between the two. This is a Padlet.com. Padlet.com is, is a new way to collaborate in the world. So what happens is, is you can uh, take one workout diary, show where you run, how you do your motivation music, how you are going to do exercises, a video of fitness. You can collaborate with everybody around uh, wherever you want to collaborate. If somebody's in San Francisco, you can do that. I think that's interesting because if you're doing a nutrition or a sports medicine or a workout fitness, I think it would be fun to collaborate and try new and different things rather than the same old stuff. I think it's eventually going to go. Yep, it is. So if Padlet.com. Be sure you're efficient when you're using your tools. I think that pretty much puts it all, all in existence right there. Um, we have to be efficient when we get ready to use technology tools and make sure that we are using the proper tools. I have tons of books that are online. I like them. However, I have not paid enough for all the students to have books online, so I use them. Sometimes I give them stuff from them. Um, I think the tools are important. I think sometimes you can have too much and you kind of get confused and you don't have a direct pathway. So when you do have tools, make sure you're using them efficiently. Also, there is a, uh, an interactive map. They're called zmaps.com. And what I thought about this when Corinne showed us this in digital health, what I thought of this right away is if you were going to be doing a project or a report, for um, like the CDC on uh, new diseases or how many diseases or where are the diseases located or, or what, where, you know, avian bird flu, where did that first develop, how fast, how far did it go? So Z maps are an interactive map that you can use. Once you put in your um, information, Z maps will put it in a map of your choice and it will help you to elaborate on, on just projects. And, I, and they're just really interesting because you can make really interesting products 
projects with ZMAPS. So don't forget ZMAPS.com. Free again. Um, of course, if you want the really expensive ones, they want you to charge, but, you know, use them. Google Translate. I can't say enough about Google Translate. Google Translate is going to help no matter what we do. And with Google Translate, you're going to have people who are going to walk into, the, into a health profession and they're not going to be able to speak English. You're going to walk into a health place and not be able to speak the language that they're doing. So when translation's confused, Google Translate has done a, a very, very nice job in enhancing their app of Google Translate. I think it's important, especially when we get more and more um, immigrants coming into the country. Also, we have a lot of students that tr go outside the state of Montana and they will run into people who have foreign language. So here's Google Translate um, and then we'll watch it and I'll stop it and we'll move on. I think about Google Translate, um, a lot of you may not know this, but I travel quite a bit um, worldwide and I've never used Google Translate any time I've gone overseas or into foreign countries and I kind of kick myself every once in a while that I have that on my phone, I should use it. Um, but anyway, it's, it's a good, it, they're just making it better for us and they're making it easier. Um, I don't think I'm young enough to go back and learn a new foreign language, so needless to say, Google Translate will help. Also, I think, it's, again, it's familiarity of technology and making the world a little bit closer. The thing about adding some excitement to your class by adding technology is, is don't be afraid of technology. Um, there's a lot of things out there that um, we have, you know, we can embrace. We don't have to always have technology. But one thing I found about going to Nisha is that technology is is there, and it's it's very very unique. It's very special, and we have to, you know, kind of admit that it's coming down the pipe, and we might as well look at it. Um, mannequins. Mannequins have technology where we can make our mannequin have a, a, uh, a particular um, problem and the students have to find that problem by looking at the body or asking questions. Uh, there's just so much out there. Can you make cl your class exciting by adding technology? We'll see how that goes. I think at times I wish my dad would have done that for me, but um, do you want to see your students that excited? A lot of times you'll see students that excited when they see something new and different. Sometimes students don't embrace it, so sometimes you have to take baby steps. So don't be afraid to try, to try new things, but also don't hit them all at once. 
infographics. That was a big thing at this conference. Is I went to a couple of uh, three three sessions, and everybody was using infographics. Infographics is is phenomenal. They're eye catching. They're visuals. They make viewers interested. They they take care of your data. If you have Microsoft Office. Sway. Sway is probably one of the newest things that I've seen. It makes everything wonderful. Don't forget PictoChart, Vengage, VizMe, Easel. Those are all infographic sites. They have really nice, helpful hints for you. Also, another new idea they came at us, and these are all just fluff ideas, but are you career ready more so than college ready? So now they're putting career ready on us instead of always college ready. And I thought that was interesting because we try to do both while we're in the health field. Another one, <coughs> pardon me, another one is virtual job shadow. I got into this one. I did a demo. Um, it was very interesting. I thought it was excellent. Um, at this time, I don't have the money for it. But I'll tell you what, when I do job shadows for my career class and I do job shadows for my medical classes, I would like to put money aside and get this one for at least a year. I thought it was very, very well done. We have a hospital, but yet we do not have a real active emergency room. So there's jobs in there that they can explore as careers. I almost think I have my administrator talked into getting it for me because I can have them use it for 7th and 8th grade, looking at new jobs, ninth graders. But we have some great people here in Fort Benton, but it still makes it really hard to go out and job shadow when you're kind of small. So virtual job shadow is actually very interesting. Um, don't be afraid to look into it. Pass Assured, once again, this is an old company. Now you can take Nexit, which is the state farm pharmaceutical or farm tech cert national test. They now offer that in a package program for you. So if you have somebody who wants to do a farm tech cert, they now can take a national test. Montana will accept the national test as long as they show that they passed with a certificate and they can start carrying that with them. I have one student that's doing that right now. The other one I thought was interesting is CareerSafe showed up. CareerSafe showed up and said, hey, do you need an OSHA 10-hour general industry health care cert? I thought that was extremely interesting. I have students that are working in the construction field. CareerSafe will let them take those. Also, some new ideas, drag and drop anatomy apps on your left. You can see those on your left. Also, don't forget Quizlet and Purpose Games. Those things, teachers, professors, they all go there and use it. Quizlet is very high end. Microsoft uses Quiz Quizlet all the time. Don't forget that those are ways that you can help your students be better prepared. Don't be a plotter, be a quarter horse. If you ever get a chance to go to one of these national uh, conferences, you should take advantage of it. They, they not only get you excited in October to be the best you can, but they also let you know that, that, that there's new stuff out there. And they also tell you that there's stuff you're doing in your classroom that are, that's pretty correct and pretty cool. And I think that every once in a while you need someone just to, just to say, hey, way to go, you're doing a great job. And national conventions do that. If you ever have any questions or anything at all, please don't hesitate. My, my email is right there. You can also look it up on our website. You can call me. Um, I'm, I'm one of the old ones. And um, I really, really, truly enjoy my classes. I'm, I do a variety of classes. Uh, right now we're in the middle of forensic science. And so um, we, just, we just want you to enjoy it. Uh, Louisville was phenomenal. I thoroughly enjoyed the conference. And, and like I said, if you have any questions or um, anything like that, I think um, Amy's going to go ahead and open it and let you guys ask questions if you have any. If you don't have any, I must have done a really good job or you're like my seniors and don't want to ask me any questions. So I'm ready for questions and answers, Amy. Marta, how about if we wait to the end after Christine is done and um, okay. we'll, then we'll take on questions. I wrote down some notes as well, and so I'd like to ask you some things at the end. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's fine. However you guys want to do it, I'm pretty flexible. Okay. Excellent. Okay. 
So this was my first time attending the NCHSE conference, and I, too, uh, really enjoyed it and got a lot out of it. One thing that I did um, that's um, different than some of the things that uh, Marta touched on is that I attended the pre-conference workshop on Tuesday, and that was intended to go over the new, new health care standards and how they've been modified since 2015. So that's what I'm going to focus um, the first part of my presentation on. Um, this slide right here, um, what I'm going to just kind of summarize in here is the fact that in May of 2015, 11 common health care foundation standards um, were reviewed, and there were originally four career pathway standards, and those are listed there. They were diagnostic, therapeutic, environmental, and health information, and those four standards were changed to five, and I addressed them actually on the next slide, and I addressed the seven uh, standards on slide five. So I'll be talking about those on those slides a little bit more. Um, in order to make these decisions to change these, 1,000 healthcare employers, college and university faculty and secondary teachers, and professional organizations all came together to provide their input to identify common practices. They reviewed the content for each standard, and they even pilot tested the results within their agency or organization. Um, they decided that the career standards, excuse me, career pathway standards would be organized by function rather than job titles. They used to have them broken down by particular specific occupations, and they realized that was just too specific, and they wanted to make that more broad. The bottom three uh, bullet points that I want to draw your attention to, the reason that they have these standards is so that students and parents can have clear direction to help set goals for future employment. Educators are able to design quality curriculum and instruction consistent with industry expectations. And consumers and employers benefit from high quality, efficient health care delivery from well-trained workers. So that's why they decided to, to have these out there for us to refer to and then also to modify them based on new current industry standards. So slide three here. Um, these are the four pathways that were changed to five. There were four originally. Now there's five. And they um, added one in and they even rephrased them. So there's therapeutic service standards, diagnostic service standards, health information standards, support service standards, and biotechnology research and development standards. And once you get this PowerPoint, you should be able to click on um, those links and see all of the, uh, how these are all described in PDF documents so you can familiarize yourself with those standards. But the one I just want to touch on briefly uh, because Renee brought this to my attention is um, we should make it clear that in, in Montana, we typically focus on therapeutic services as it covers the widest set of job occupations. We don't necessarily have pathways in other areas. Um, so therapeutic services, I'll just read what it says there that these standards apply to occupations or functions primarily involved in changing the health status of the patient over time. The standards specify the knowledge and skills needed by professionals in the therapeutic service pathway. So really what that's saying is that um, today it, it, in most of our classes that we offer at the high school level, we are um, uh, we're reacting to patients that are ill. We're not preventing um, illnesses. We're working more on treating them, and even possibly trying to find cures for them. We're not really working on how to prevent those, and we don't have wellness or things like that in our curriculum right now. Um, the next slide, this is um, the links I told you about. So for all of these five pathway standards, when you get this PowerPoint, you can simply click on these links and then read about each one. And these are the 11 healthcare, or excuse me, health science standards and a description of all of them. Uh, that were adopted again in 2015. And just a couple things I want to point out here, because I think most of them are pretty self-explanatory when you have time to read through them. But standard three was one that I did, didn't understand, so I had to ask about it at the conference. It says that systems identify how key systems affect services performed and quality of care. And what they're referring to there as far as systems is, it's the network of the professionals that work together basically within a healthcare system. So that would include everything from when a patient walks into, let's say, the emergency room, and they're greeted by the receptionist or the uh, healthcare information specialist who takes their information and gets all their health insurance information, to then going back and being um, seen by a nurse, 
followed by a doctor, um, possibly going into surgery or other um, medical attention, then maybe having the surgery to then being seen for, for instance, physical therapy, and then going back to their physician and having follow-up care, um, that kind of thing. So we're talking about those, all those people working together, and it's important that students understand that whole system and how it works. Um, standard, standard four, that's basically referring to soft skills. And standard five, that's basically referring to HIPAA and even malpractice insurance. The rest of those you can um, read at your leisure, but basically these all provide a clear and consistent understanding of industry and post-secondary expectations for health science teachers and students. That's why they've adopted these. And these standards are designed to provide the essential knowledge common across health professions to prepare and increase the number of students that are college and career ready. So this slide, uh, National Health Science Assessment. Okay, so I'm going to kind of segue, but this national assessment is tied back directly into the National Health Science Standards. There is an organization called Precision Exams, and here's a picture of the uh, certificate students would get. Um, precision exams have worked in conjunction with the National Health Science Standards and with um, NCHSE to create um, a test that at the end of it, when students uh, pass it, they're awarded a certificate of proficiency. And that shows that they are proficient in the, health, the 11 health science standards. Again, it's administered by an organization called Precision Exams. And this test um, was created with over 22, uh, or excuse me, over those 1,000 um, health science uh, professionals and got input from them on industry uh, skills. And this test includes multiple choice t questions, labeling, matching, and even sequence ordering. But it's not a, it's not a memorization type of test. It actually has um, critical thinking and problem solving involved. And again, it's current with uh, testing standards that go along with the health science standards. This assessment is available online. The nice thing is that it provides both pre- and post testing opportunities and even reporting services for the teachers to give feedback to the students. The cost of it is for NCHSE member states, it's $12 per assessment or $15 for uh, non-NCHSE uh, member states. Students have to uh, currently get a 70% on it in order to pass. And students are allowed to retake the post-test as many times as needed and they'll just continue to be charged that same fee, whether it's $12 or $15, that same fee is in this initial time they take the assessment. So again, the next slide um, shows a picture of what that certificate looks like. This is the back of it, and the back of it shows the 11 standards that they have been met proficiency in. And uh, Renee asked me a question. She said, um, does she think that this assessment is relevant for Project Lead the Way Biomed students? If that's what I um, teach. And my um, comment to that is that I think after students were to take both PBS and HBS, a minimum of those two. But additionally, with outside um, study time, uh, explanation, lecture discussion, um, having skill testing with my help outside of school hours, I think that students uh, could do well and pass this test. But again, this would have to be something that would be optional for the students outside school hours to be willing to take this, um, or, excuse me, to get that additional education. There's just not enough time in our class time to add all the skills and information necessary to do well on that. And this is something I do intend to talk to my administrator about and see if this is something we can offer. <clears throat> it's probably not until next year. Um, Renee also is wondering um, if any other schools are doing this exam. She thought that maybe Great Falls was, but I haven't had time to check into that to see if Great Falls is, is offering it. And then um, Renee also asked if anyone, um, excuse me, if any employers that the certificate means anything to them, will they give preference or pay, and what does the certificate mean to teachers? Um, I haven't actually had a chance to reach out to the, our medical community to find out if it would be uh, beneficial on how they would do this, but of course I would do that before I were to offer this test and invest this type of money, and if it would actually give any kind of preference over them um, hiring 
students that, that pass the test. That's definitely something I think we need to be doing before we spend money on, on certifications such as this or, or anything else out there for, for that matter. I also think, though, it is a meaningful way for, for us as teachers and uh, for us as teachers to measure if we, how we are teaching, what we are teaching, um, where we're maybe missing some content, skills, um, knowledge, information, whatever it might be. And I think it's a way for students also to see where they stand with regards to their learning and understanding. This is a preview of the test. Excuse me, you can go to this website. <clears throat> you can actually go to Precision to their website and see um, some snapshots of the test questions. This uh, exam blueprint, that shows you the breakdown of the test questions by the 11 standards. You'll notice, for instance, Academic Foundation, the total items that they're going to ask you about are 16, but the points are 17, and that's because obviously a couple of the questions, or at least one of the questions, is worth more than one point. So they're not necessarily worth just more than one, or one point, they can be worth half a point to one point to even three points. And that's how you get that difference in the number of questions versus the number of points. And this, um, there is a flash drive that you can purchase from NCHSE that provides uh, practice, or excuse me, provides pre-test questions, PowerPoints, activities, communication, and practice tests to prepare students for that National Health Science Assessment. Um, I can't remember the exact cost of it. I want to say it might be around $200. I had hoped to purchase it at the conference, but I wasn't able to. So, but that is available if you want to contact um, NCHSC. And I actually provide the website there above, right up here. I provide that website where you can go and uh, order it yourself. So just a couple other fun things that um, I attended and learned at the conference. I'm just going to kind of highlight some of these because actually Marta discussed some of them. <clears throat> um, this is a workshop I went to creating a five-star health science pathway. Uh, this lady named Randy Honeywell is from the state of Nevada. And one of the cool things that, that, that stand out in my mind with regards to Nevada is that they have CT endorsements on their diploma if they pass a minimum of two exams, and those exams have to be in the subject area as well as workplace readiness. The students have to have a 3.0 GPA in those CTE course courses. They also get college credit for college credit for and free for some dual credit classes as well. Um, one of the things that Randy stressed is that you must have work-based learning experience to be considered a true five-star program. And I know that's something that all of us in Montana are striving to do, is to have more work-based learning and have the opportunity for students to shadow professionals. And that's really what she was stressing there. Um, this was the, this is a representative from Precision Exams, and he just addressed the health science assessment that I already um, explained. So I just put his name on here so that you can contact him if you have any questions about Precision Exams. And his uh, presentation was really moving because he really, um, supports this and he's seen what a difference it can make with getting this um, certificate and how it has actually opened doors for some students, not only into entry-level jobs, but also it's motivated them to get other additional certifications and to uh, go on to college, whether it's an associate's degree or a bachelor's degree. So his presentation was really inspiring. This workshop, Empower Students, was presented by Laura, Laura Flynn, excuse me. she's with the National Health Career Association although they just refer to it as NHA. And this goes over to the next slide, so I'll, come, I'll be sharing slides 14 and 15 and toggling back and forth. But their tests are all provisional until a student graduates, and then they are fully, fully certified once they have their diploma. Students are two-year industry credentialed from the day they take the exam and pass it. Um, in Montana, if we were to want to offer any of these exams, we need to have NHA contact our Department of Education to ensure these tests are recognized and approved. Um, there's no age limit on taking any of the tests, but the farm tech test must be taken within 30 days of graduation, and students must be on track to graduate. And one of the fastest growing allied health professions is uh, medical assisting. And that is one of these um, areas they offer. So you can see in the box below that they offer medical assistant certification, phlebotomy technician, medical administrative assistant, EKG tech, 
electronic health record specialist, farm tech, billing and coding, and patient care tech. And I provide the link there um, of more information on how you can get more information and get started. Um, the cost, their cost, and they didn't have their cost available, obviously. They want you to call them and find out the cost. Um, it's, it's not cheap, but, you know, if you have the, the money, the resources, um, I think it's worthwhile if you can offer these. The cost do include study guides, five practice tests, and one of the things she did mention is that she has seen uh, states use Perkins money to fund these uh, certification programs. Um, they have a 74 pass rate, and I want to stipulate here that it's for all combined exams. It's not on average, it's just all combined, oh, well, it's actually all combined on average, it's not for any particular exam. And they also mentioned that some exams can lead to national certifications. And one thing you need to keep in mind if you were to offer the EKG or phlebotomy certification is that they do have to do 10 live EKGs or 10 live blood draws. Um, I think one of the things I want to mention here, and I'm sure everybody would agree and, and, and knows this, is that I think the most important thing that any school can do uh, before instituting any type of CTE class, whether it's one of these certification ones or just simply offering um, a new, let's say, biomed class, is to have an in-depth, long-term and even ongoing uh, conversation with their medical community members to see really what allied professions these hospitals in our area need. Um, if there isn't a need for these professions, then we're really spending money that really may not benefit our students in our community unless, of course, they go somewhere else and there are job opportunities. So I think that's really something we need to think about um, of where the money is, is best spent with regards to these certifications, not just because it sounds fun or we as a teacher want to teach them. We need to find out where the job opportunities are going to be in our communities. Um, I'm just going to uh, kind of play skim over this one because Marta talked about this. Infographics, again, it's just a rather new um, computer graphic way of communicating information, uh, mostly statistics and data, in a more appealing, simple uh, way, and students seem to really like it. Um, so that's, uh, you can go to those websites. I just simply uh, showed some links there of how to access some ways of using infographics. All those websites allow you to do that. Digital health care. So this was just a random uh, workshop that provided quite a few different things. Uh, quizzes, these are, or, yeah, quizzes, these are shared quizzes that are available, or you can actually create your own. You can even add pictures to them. HoloLens, that's really cool. Um, glasses that basically Microsoft created. Um, if I remember right, they are, I think, $2,000 a pair, but there are much, much, much cheaper versions out there on the market, less than $100 per pair. That, less than, more than, less than $100, excuse me. And, um, what these glasses are used to do is basically provide 3D holograms, and they allow students to learn and see the human anatomy right in front of them. And they can walk around the body, they can manipulate the body, they can turn it and see different parts of it in a more three-dimensional, virtual way. And again, just want to point out that I agree with Marta in regards to Google Translate, that um, you can actually point the phone at anything, and it will read it back to you in your language if you're in another country or if it says that a patient brings in a document and you can't, a, patient, a person can't read it. Um, I think this is really important as our society becomes more global and we need to learn to communicate with the second um, language um, people. And that does it. I'm open to our question and answer session. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and unmute everyone um, if anyone has any questions. So just one moment. Hey, this is Christine. Oh, there Are we go. Here? Everybody's muted now. Yep, I'm here. Yep. Hey, I'm assuming that you'll be sharing these PowerPoints with everybody that participated in the call so they can have our PowerPoints for the links and that type of thing? Yes, so it is recorded, and then I will just need both of you ladies to send me PDFs of your um, presentation, and I will share the links with you. Excellent.
So if we have any questions, um, anyone can go ahead. And I know Renee has a few, so why don't you start? All right. I did want to bring up that I know CareerSafe is doing something specifically for health science. I did talk with our state OSHA office and they are also willing to come to your schools for free, but they do have a requirement of a set number of people that have to be in that training. So if that is something, and it's fairly lengthy. So I didn't bring it up to a lot of schools yet. I wasn't sure if you could really afford to take out that many hours out of your, your curriculum to be able to put in an OSHA training in health science, safety, and liability things. Uh, so. Anyone has any comments about that? If you'd like me to look into it more, I certainly will. I know that they are willing to do that for us. When when you say lengthy, Renee, I guess I have a question back to you. When you say lengthy, um, the the Career Safe offers a ten hour online class. You take it you take it at your own time. Um, how long would OSHA if they came out to let's say I had a had a time for all the all the people in Shoto County to come, how many hours would they have to have then? It seems to me they want to do like a two-day thing back-to-back, -back, like a Friday and a Saturday or something like that. It's more than 10 okay. hours. Okay, okay, okay. And would it be free and there would be a certificate attached to it? Yes. Okay. Renee, I did the um, general OSA one here in Billings two years ago. Uh-huh. Um, Scott Anderson, our principal, got that arranged, and we had it on a, oh, I can't, it was either a Thursday, Friday, or a, it, maybe it was a Friday, Saturday, maybe a week after the school year. Oh, Christine, you're breaking up. Oh, she lost audio. I had, can you hear me now? Yes. I had about 10 of my students participate in that OSHA training. And yep. again, it was the general one, and they received the certificate at the end once they took the test and passed it. And I think the kids enjoyed it. They got something out of it. And I didn't think it was that big of a time commitment for, I think it was actually a day and a half was all it took. Great. And OSHA also provided a, a lunch free of charge as well. Oh, that's very nice. They didn't tell me yeah. they provide lunch, but I love that idea. Yeah, and I, I and I think they they did that rather than us. Maybe Scott bought it, but I thought it was an an OSHA thing. Um, and again, that was for the general general one. But I think I would have students that would be interested in doing that health science one because once you get the certificate, it's a lifelong certificate. Oh, nice. All right. Do you think? And one of the go, oh, ahead. go ahead. One of the things about that general certificate, and I'm sure this would be similar with the health science certificate is that these kids could go into a restaurant and if they wanted to work in the kitchen and say, look, I took this OSHA class. I got certified in this area. I understand why it's important to keep my hands out of the, you know, meat grinder or whatever it is. I understand how to properly use a chainsaw. I know how to properly get on and off of a ladder and when one shouldn't be used. And so that's a way, I guess, a benefit for them to go into a future employer and, and show them they have that certificate. All right. Well, the other thing is I was talking with Edson Barton from Precision Exams, and they are looking at doing um, uh, like an individual course exam as well as this whole program of study exam. Uh, and it is CM Russell in Great Falls that is going to try out the assessment this year. And I think what we'll do is use that as a pilot and see how successful that is for students whether it gives them an opportunity to get into jobs in a hospital. Since that assessment's not necessarily a right to work, we do need to work with facilities to find out what value those assessments um, or whether they would um, know that a student could, maybe the assessment gives them um, a leg up in being able to do some work-based learning or internship or something like that as well. So I, let's stay in touch about that and see if we want to pursue that assessment. Yes, keep me in mind too because um, that's an interesting point of view, but also, um, like I said, I have a lot of students that are going into the welding, construction, um, heavy lifting, all of that, and so um, I would I would like to take care of them too. So. Oh, so you're talking about the OSHA stuff, not not the precision exams assessment. Is oh, that I'm correct, Marta? Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. 
And Connie, you were on the phone with us today. What did you think about this? Um, it was really nice to be able to hear about um, um, the excellent takeaways and options, especially for those of us that didn't get to go. It's really nice to both ha have such information brought back from the meeting, but also to get uh, some sense of how we might uh, use, deploy, uh, apply what we're learning in here in Montana. So I appreciate it very much. All right. And Lori, you're on with us too. I'm, I'm delighted to see that you've been um, participating with us today. Any takeaways for you? I just really appreciated all the information. Um, I've been taking great notes, and um, I'll try some of these things. I appreciate it. All right. I did hear from some of our smaller schools in the Northwest, and they had parent-teacher meetings this afternoon. So they apologized for not being able to participate, but that they definitely wanted a copy of this. So as Amy said, she has recorded everything, and I'm going to be looking at either posting it on our OPI website or perhaps on the OPI Digital Academy, and um, then we'll make that available to all the rest of the folks in the state that were not able to participate today. I want to thank you so very much, Marta and Christine and everybody on the phone. Uh, we have a great health science program throughout the state of Montana, and it just keeps getting stronger, and I really appreciate all of the blood, sweat, and tears you all put into making this such a successful program for our students. We need you. We love you. Hey, hey Renee, before we sign off, Lori, um, the, what are you guys doing up in Shelby? We, do, we have like a, a med prep class. We do shadowing every week. I go over the standards. We, you know, incorporate med terminology. I'm hands-on. I've got a lot of, um, you know, assessments that we do. Um, just kind of, kind of making it so that it, it works for our students too. Um, but we do go into the facility and have the facility. I'm talking about the hospital and the clinic, and then um, medical professionals around um, our town, and they come in and talk to the kids about their, um, you know, their professions what they like about them, what they don't, starting salaries, what a day would look like. Um, they always have activities for us, and it's pretty cool. So That's really didn't, neat. I didn't, know, I didn't know you guys were doing that up there. Um, I think this is my third year. I just got certified, I think it was two years ago. Okay. Yeah. So, Fantastic. Um, well, if, if you ever want to collaborate or, or I can come and watch you or you if you want to come down here, I know it's a distance, but, you know, I've driven that way a few times coaching, <laughs> so I know the road very well. But, um, yeah, that would be fun to talk with you because it would be nice to talk to someone. You know, Great Falls is really good to talk to, but they're so huge and so available and they have all this other stuff that it would be nice to talk to somebody in a, in a little smaller environment. Yeah, they they have such wonderful programs. It's just, you know, that that's what they do during the day. We have to do eight other classes, so you know, it yeah, makes it, yeah, makes it kind of hard. But I do what I can, and and we're plugging along. So, well, thank you, and Constance, thank you for attending. That's very cool. We appreciate it. I appreciate thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Thank you. Are we all done? We are. Hey.